Well, hello there, MUS 260 class. I hope you all are doing well, that you are healthy and you are staying quarantined and not going crazy in your homes. So this week we are looking at week three of integrating music into our core curriculum subjects. And we are going to kind of um, be, uh, piggyback off of last week uh, where we were looking at uh, music used within the language arts classroom. We have um, some more activities, another article to read that has to do with this. and. Um, Hopefully you'll gain some insight on how you can use music in your classroom one day. So before we get going, I want to talk about my expectations. So something that was kind of brought up last week was um, that we are now doing this weekly instead of daily. Originally, when I was designing this class, I was going to try to do a daily thing on Tuesdays and Thursdays, and that just got to be way too much for both me trying to to plan it and also to expect you to try to keep up with it. So that way we moved into a weekly uh, type of expectations. Um, so that way you would have plenty of time to work on whatever I'm asking you to work on. Some of you are on it. I have people that are turning in assignments as soon as it's posted on Saturday, and I have other people that are waiting till Friday to get it in. But it, it doesn't really matter to me as long as you are doing the work. If you do need help, though, remember, don't wait until the last day to be coming and asking for help. So our expectations this week is that you're going to complete this YouTube lecture right here. And this is uh, for each day, but I mean each week. Um, and so this is going to be more of just explaining what's going on this week um, instead of actually giving you a lecture. And uh, there is a weekly article. Um, this is a new one. This is not one that I've actually done in class before. The other articles that you will see um, the last two and then the one next week I do every year or every semester, I should say. And this one is a new one, and I really, really liked it. I think it probably has some of the better ideas that I have seen, so I hope hopefully you enjoy it. Um, once you read the article, um, there is a short quiz that goes with it, about 10 points. Um, do know that I go in and check the quizzes, even though the computer does grade them, just in case there's a spelling error or something like that, just to make sure that everything is, is being graded correctly. Um, so don't stress out if you have some sort of issue. Of course, send me a quick text or an email and I will look at it for sure, but I do check on these. And then our activity this week is going to be a children's book activity. Now, this is going to be more than just 20 points. We're looking at a 50 point assignment here. So I really highly expect you to take this seriously. This children's book activity is one that I do every semester in class. So we're just going to be setting it up on an online version. I will be a little bit more uh, forgiving for some um, having to do it from home, possibly even by yourself without any help. So I do understand there are limitations um, and I'll talk more more about the details in the children's book activity on the next slide. And then I don't want you to not pick up your recorder this whole time. I want to make sure that you're playing a recorder. You should be playing it on a daily basis and going through our YouTube video links. I'm giving you four new lines each week to, to work on and learn. And then the next week you'll be quizzed on one of those lines. So do make sure that you are practicing those four lines so that you're ready to go the next week. Um, and again, some of you are going to get this a lot quicker than others. Also, make sure you, everybody that ordered a book through me got a CD with their book. Out of all semesters for this to happen the first time, this was the perfect semester. So besides just going through the lines with me on the YouTube link, you can pull out your CD and listen to it and play along with it. It's a great help. And of course, stop both the YouTube video and stop the uh, the the CD and just practice if you need to practice, okay? Um, but uh, the recorder quizzes are gonna be due every Friday night at midnight, okay? So we will have a rec recorder quiz every week until we end the semester. And I know when I first started out, there was only four, but this is a way to make sure that you're actually doing what you're supposed to do um, while you're at home. And so, of course, like you've been doing, you're going to record yourself and upload it onto YouTube. I do ask that you keep all of our videos that you put on YouTube. Um, keep it up until the end of the semester. You may even want to keep it until uh, over over summer. You can leave it as unlisted. But if anyone were to come in from um, the university and ask to see what I have done, I would want to be able to show them 
here's what I've done, here's how they've submitted their assignments, so that way there's no questions or problems. It's probably not going to happen, but just in case, keep those up there, and then at the end of the semester, or better yet, at the beginning of next semester, once all the grades have gone through, you're, you're free to do what you want with those videos, whether it's delete them, um, turn them to private, um, whatever, or if you really love them and you want to make them completely public, um, some of you, I think you should because we have had some amazing ideas that I have seen and I've absolutely loved. So you may want to make them public so that you could use them in the future. All right, so let's talk about our children's book activity that we're going to be doing. So like I said, I do this every semester. It's actually one of my favorite activities, so I'm extremely bummed that we are not going to get to do this face to face. Um, I think I enjoy it as much as you would enjoy it with everybody else participating. So normally what I have you do is I'll let you um, either do it by yourself or you can pick a partner to do this with. Unfortunately, being in the situation that we're in, everyone is going to have to do this on their own. <laughs> so I'm bummed about that, but we might have some really amazing ideas. So basically the idea around this is that students are going to be more engaged in reading and not just reading, but comprehending what they're hearing and what they're they're uh, reading by participating with the book when they're actively listening. And so that is what we are going to do. We're going to set up a children's book um, where we're going to use music to help the students actively listen to the story. Now, you could do this in other ways. I have been to um, library programs with my own children where they'll like, they may have a book on fruit. And so they hand out these pieces of fruit like felt board you know what a felt board is hopefully um, or maybe magnets on the back for a magnetic board and then they have to listen for when their fruit gets called out of the book and they have to go up and put their fruit up on the board and so that's one way to actively listen um, so they're more engaged when they have a role to play and so what we're going to do instead of that type of thing we're going to use music now I will tell you right now, I have three examples listed on the actual assignment or in um, on, on the page there. Uh, actually, I may even have four at the end of this because I found another one and I haven't put it in yet, but I'll put it in before this gets put up for you. Um, requirements for this. So you're going to pick a book that is age appropriate. Um, now, originally we actually Go on, I always say we go on a field trip. Um, we leave the classroom and we would go to the library at NKU and go to the children's section. However, that's not a possibility right now. So um, you're going to have to find a book, whether it's from your own home or whether it's from online. Um, I wanna give a big shout out to those students that um, just were problem solvers in week one when we were doing the soundtrack to a book. Um, some of you did not have any children's books handy and you guys got on and figured it out, found some digital books to take care of that assignment. Um, so I'm very, very proud of those, those of you that just made it work and you didn't actually have to email me or tell me you couldn't figure it out. You just did it. That is what a good teacher does is that you figure it out, you make it work, you put it together. So I'm very, very um, proud of those students that did that. Um, so you can, you know, go to if you're at home, maybe you've got a younger sibling um, or if you just need to find a digital book, that is completely fine, too. And uh, you can even set it up if you want to take where you take pictures of the pages or if it's a digital book that that's what we see and you just do a voiceover on your video, that would be completely fine, too. I don't necessarily have to see your face for this. Um, then what you're going to do is you're going to find some way to incorporate music throughout the book by choosing at least one element of music to focus on. So this could be melody, it could be harmony, rhythm, timbre, dynamics, form. Um, I'm going to tell you the, the three examples that you're going to see from me are going to be melody, um, where they're actually singing the book. And in fact, the, another one is going I actually have two for melody. Another one is going to be wrapping the book. So that's a lot of fun. You will also see another example for me where we use timbre. And um, so that video there, I'm going to preference that I'm about eight months pregnant with doing that video. So I had to sit up on a chair and uh, 
uh, teach these preschoolers. And um, as you'll see, I had to get on the floor with one student because she wouldn't participate. But it's a, it, it makes a, the humor in the, the video there. And then the last example I have for you is a rhythm example. And this is one that I've had to use by family to, um, to do since I normally do that one live in class as an example for you. I've never um, had to do it uh, in a video to show you. So this is all new for us. Um, so those three examples there, or four examples there, um, definitely watch them. Feel free to use things from it. Make it your own. Um, don't use, obviously, you don't want to use the exact same story um, or the exact same way, but you can definitely um, use ideas from those if you choose to. So during the presentation, um, you are going to present the musical concept that you are teaching. So is it dynamics? Is it rhythm? Is it form? And then you're going to read the book and you're incorporate that musical concept during the reading. Now, this is where I'm going to be very um, forgiving. I know some of you are going to be completely by yourself and you will um, be reading the book and having to play the instrument at the same time to give us the concept. <laughs> that is unheard of. We've never done this before this way. Normally what happens is the class in class is your people that are going to either hold instruments or do whatever you ask them to do, and you just have to read the book. <laughs> um, so I do understand if you have family or roommates that are available to help you out during the recording, feel free to use them. I have no problem with that. Um, in fact, some of the best videos I've seen so far have been where mom is participating, or um, I think uh, we've had a couple little sisters participate, and um, one, we had a boyfriend participate, and he, let me tell you, he was really into that singing, so I really enjoyed those videos, so don't worry about it. If you can get them to help you out, that's completely fine. If you can't find anyone to help you and you are doing it all in your own, I will be forgiving. Um, and so the next one here for online class, so this is different um, than, than what I expect for in class. Um, you're going to record yourself reading the story and doing the musical elements, okay? Uh, and like I said, you may be assisted by family or friends. Um, this is going to be a create your own instrument at home type of thing. So you're not going to have uh, uh, access to the shakers or the drums or um, the rhythm sticks that I have in my classroom, which you would normally have access to. So just um, if you want to give me specific instruments and then give me the substitution forms, for example, you're going to you would rather use the shaky eggs. Um, but instead you're going to use keys and jingle them. That's completely fine. Um, you would use rhythm sticks here, but you don't have any, so you're gonna just clap your hands. That's completely fine. No worries about that. Um, I'm not gonna count off, obviously. We are going to do our best. Um, all right, so when the online, what you will do is you're going to submit your plan and your directions. And so there is an example, it's on the next slide, but it's also on Canvas for you. Um, and this is on your book, uh, you're gonna put it on the discussion board. And at the bottom of that discussion board, you're also going to include uh, the uh, link to you reading the book, okay? And so um, what I want you to do, now normally we would be in class and we would all just perform these for each other. And, uh, but since we can't do that, we're putting it on the discussion board so other people can see this and participate. So I'm gonna expect you to view at least five of the other videos and leave a comment. And I, I, I love the fact that you're very positive with each other, but go ahead and give them a critique as well. I mean, nobody is perfect. Find something that maybe they could work on a little bit more. Um, but uh, give them a positive comment and a, a critique there so I know that you've actually listened and participated with the book. Um, feel free. I know you may feel silly, but when you're sitting in the class or you're sitting there watching the videos, participate if you can, especially if it's like a rhythm one or a singing one. Nobody's watching you. Just go ahead and do it. Um, if it's a if it's a noisemaker one, that may be harder to do, but you maybe you could you could um, uh, figure that out. So anyway, um, I want you to watch at least five of the videos. And if you want to do more, feel free to do more, okay? Um, the idea is to, so that way you have lots of ideas to, to get, uh, to take into your own classroom one day. So you may have had an idea to do one thing and then your classmates, by watching five of them, you have, oh, that's a great idea. I'll have to use that in my class one day. Oh, that's another great idea. Or hopefully this is not the case. Oh, that was not good. I don't want to use that. <laughs> hopefully that's not the case. 
All right, so here is my example for you. So this, uh, these are the directions. Again, this is already on Canvas, so you can look at this as on Canvas as well. But you would put your name as the presenter, the book that you're reading, and who the author is, um, what grade it is focused on. So mine is going to be first through third. And then the directions, what exactly we are supposed to do prior to reading the book. So you're going to teach the rhythm on the board um, and then go and then I went through how I would teach it. So the first time through, I'm going to do it by syllables. Second time through, I'm going to add rhythm sticks. Third time through, I'm going to add the saying, don't let the pigeon stay up late. When you watch my third video on rhythm, this is the actual activity that we are doing. So it'll kind of give you more idea. And then the last exactly, you're going to read your story and then how people are going to interact with the book as they're listening. The last thing I want you to look at um, for this week is you're going to read article number three. Like I said, this is a new article for me, um, so I had to create a, a quiz from scratch here. Um, so hopefully it doesn't have any issues in it like quiz two had. Um, but uh, quiz one and two I did have to create from scratch because we've always done those in class. Luckily, the um, the next week, I, I already had those quizzes made up from um, a previous semester where I had to be out for a couple of days. So that was kind of nice having that ready to go. And so I hopefully have worked out all the problems on those quizzes. But um, this quiz, hopefully we don't have any issues with it, but you're gonna read the article. And I really, really like this article. Um, I didn't wanna give you too much work. I almost decided to assign one of these um, activities for you to kind of um, create a plan yourself or something you might use in your classroom. Um, but I decided that the children's book project was gonna be pretty big for this week. I didn't wanna give you too much to do, um, but I really recommend, take read this article. You may even wanna print it out, stick it in a binder somewhere with, with great ideas to use in the future because I really liked all the ideas that came out of this article. So definitely check that out. All right, guys, thank you so much for working so hard. Um, I've been very impressed with what I've been seeing over the last couple of weeks. I'm very proud of everything that you guys are doing, and I really, really, really do miss you all. Um, I, I'm really looking forward to some of the videos each week because I do get to see you and interact with you. I'm still waiting on Titanic, Zoe. Ty, uh, Zoe was going to be playing Titanic for me on recorder, so I'm waiting for that video to come in. Um, but uh, I do uh, I do miss you all, and I hope that you are staying healthy and, um, and getting all your work done. I don't know how stressed you are about all of your classes moving to online. Hopefully my class has not been a super stressful time, but that you are still learning and engaging here. All right, have a wonderful week, and I'll be back with you next week.